welcome back everyone it's me Matt I really appreciate you stopping by on today's video and if you are new to my channel I would strongly encourage you to click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of videos in the future so today we're talking about warfare and its technicalities you know a lot of people when they think of asymmetric warfare or conventional warfare that it's quite simplistic straightforward in the modern world even similar to that of say World War II with Blitzkrieg charging tanks across the battlefield but you could never be more wrong and I think it's a very large uh, I guess misconception to see these tanks crossing these fields and you know you see the battle lines and engagements and training regimes and all sorts of things and you think oh well that seems kind of simple you know the strategic side of warfare is something that I don't talk about much on my channel because for sure I'm not a subject matter expert but it really does intrigue me especially as an active serving member of a military uh, there is the chance of someday that I could be put into a conflict that involves me being tasked with some sort of strategic or tactical level uh, assault attack defense whatever it may be and today we're going to go over a rather interesting video that I found talking about how to potentially cross rivers uh, as a very large battle force against another battle force and the kind of things that really play into doing stuff uh, such as obstacle crossings. You know, it's not as simple as just driving to point A and point B and fighting someone along the way. There's a lot of different variables that can come across when an enemy force or a friendly force encounters one another, when obstacles such as a river are in place. And it really does open your eyes when you watch a video like this thinking, wow it really isn't as simple as you think it would be in terms of a conventional warfare kind of style situation and you know when I go through this video and we're gonna kind of break it down a little bit it really opens your eyes to see that there is so much planning that must go through just to cross one single river for a battle group it, it just baffles the mind almost the amount of assets that are available the amount of soldiers troops uh, intelligence um, I star it's incredible so we're gonna take a look at this video break it down a little bit and I want to really kind of showcase something that I really don't get exposed to enough and I really want to research more into so let's take a look as part of MDO future friendly forces will overcome standoff through penetrating disintegrating and exploiting the future complex battlefield presents advanced challenges to friendly forces requiring them to aggregate disaggregate, and move continuously to survive. One unique challenge facing the future force is to move along contested lines of communications with multiple complex wet gap crossing obstacles. Security conditions must be set in advance to assure freedom of action and to gain a degree of predictability. Peer threats are able to coordinate and combine multiple advanced capabilities that create temporary and permanent periods of overmatch. The adversary employs national and district level intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, unmanned aerial systems for targeting, conventional short, mid and long range fires, and will deny positioning, navigation and timing and communications to counter friendly actions. So this graphic alone just goes to show you the complexity and the kind of assets that are available just for something as simple as a river crossing. Now something I always have a debate with with people is you don't need technology and it's not the be all and end all in combat capabilities and winning the battle. And I would have to disagree on every sense of the word. In a modern battle space today, if you have technology on your side, such as I-Star, surveillance, or communications, you're already about 20 steps ahead of certain forces that do not have these kind of assets. And in something like a river crossing, communication and intelligence before getting to an obstacle is absolutely crucial. And that's why we're seeing, not only in the uh, you know friendly force, but in the opposing force, using their own assets to huge benefit, whether it be, you know, plotting their own minefields, scanning the battle space to understand exactly what kind of threats and in what in-depth positioning they have, whether it be, you know, long-range artillery fire, uh, armored battle groups that are a little bit more mobile, or the close-range uh, special close-in uh, troops that uh, can actually reconnaissance the area, such as, you know, uh, pathfinders, etc. And this is crucial, you know, this is crucial for them to prepare their own battle space uh, defensive nature, or they may even create their own counter-attack before the uh, opposing force comes towards them. So we always look at things from a basis of what do we have, and what do we have capable to actually use against them for intelligence. But at the world that we're in today, it's more about what do they have? What is the kind of assets they have capable to prevent us from getting to this crossing before we even get there? Um, and, you know, for me, 
it's kind of scary as an artillery gunner to know that, you know, I could be seen before I even get a round off from the heavy ice star capabilities and even jamming or counter battery that's out there today. The enemy converges five domains on a decisive space, requiring U.S. all domain protection. A heavy division penetrates enemy defenses, overcoming A2AD. They present deception crossings to the adversary, which causes them to shift their defensive focus. Multiple brigade combat teams conduct simultaneous river crossing operations to move elements across the obstacle and secure the far side. Say again. Quest mission update. Copy now, Charlie Six. All comms restored. So the interesting part here is communications, right? I know firsthand when I was in Afghanistan using uh, radios and communicating between, you know, just a company level net was a nightmare. It really was. The mountains were horrible. Um, you know, radios, sometimes the, the frequencies are just have issues in certain environments. Uh, and the radios just were difficult to work with sometimes. And we had real problems communicating with one another. And when you're working as, say, an armored battle force, it is very difficult to you know, work together, especially if you can't see one another. In the infantry, you tend you can shout between one another for the most part. But uh, when you're starting to work with vehicles and something like a river crossing where there's logistics involved and uh, huge levels of assets available, if your comms is not working 100%, you're going to have a very difficult time getting across this river quickly and effectively. And that's the key here, fast, speed, get across the obstacle. And you see in this instance, you know, the, the vehicles did get across. He was quite isolated, that one lone little Abrams there taking on a BMP, but his comms was lost. So he didn't even know if the rest of his battle group was able to follow him on. He didn't know if he needed to proceed. It could open up into a whole realm of problems. So once again, communication is absolutely vital in these kind of situations, because if you cross the river, that's part and parcel. But getting the other side with no support because you weren't told to go, is even worse. The division protects the force by preserving essential capabilities, denying enemy freedom of action, and enabling access for onward movement. Preserve essential capabilities. Friendly forces rely on ISR sensing to fully understand the adversary, identify threats, obstacles, and hazards, and develop mitigating strategies prioritizing protection requirements and allocating resources to preserve critical capabilities, assets, and activities. So in this particular situation, we're looking more along the lines of what assets do we have and how can we protect them or keep them going for the entire battle? Because not all assets are, for the most part, going to cross this obstacle or going to move on with the rest of the mobile force. Things like, you know, uh, logistics, artillery for the most part, uh, critical ice style, communication systems, HQ, all those sort of things, most of the time don't cross across the obstacle with everyone else until there's more a robust system or a robust defensive network on the other side ready to take them on. So you have to kind of look at a battle space as, okay, I'm going to send my attacking force. What's coming behind it? Is it protected? Because a lot of your key infrastructure and, and capabilities is normally actually left behind than it is taken to the front. Uh, tanks can be replaced, you know, unfortunately, infantry and soldiers can be replaced. But things like highly critical radar, communications networks, uh, battalion HQs, brigade HQs, a lot of different, you know, people that need to be protected. Uh, believe it or not, artillery is an extremely important and critical part of the battle space because artillery can create a massive amount of firepower and standoff to uh, a brigade group or a battle group or a combat team because they have that range, right? You can cause a lot of damage without having to put anyone's lives at risk if you have a good capability of artillery there. So they're classified as a very important asset and activity. Uh, and in this particular situation, they're trying to say, you need to preserve that. You need to protect it before you move on to, you know, sending off more forces into the battle. Because if you don't protect those vital assets moving forward, you're going to have a really bad time continuing on the battle later on. Deny enemy freedom of action. Friendly forces conduct counter UAS, counter mobility, and assure PNT and communications through the cyber and space domains. They control the information narrative and actively seize windows of opportunity to try to change the adversary's decision making through military deception, cover, concealment, and reducing threat ability to see and understand. So I'm going to be a little bit cliche here and quote something from Sun Tzu 
which is if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle, unquote. And that makes every sense of the word and hence why it's part of the art of war, which if by the way you've never read or studied, please do. It's a very eye-opening and fascinating, um, you know, concept of war. And uh, something you can definitely learn from for things like this when we talk of strategy and tactics and things. It's, it's really, really cool. But that quote really does ring extremely true in a scenario like this. Okay, you can see all the different um, methods of trying to get across this obstacle or the different tactics that can be used to make it effectively successful, such as concealment, deception, etc. Um, uh, maybe a whole multitude of the above, you know. It's not normally just one thing that's going to occur, but you can see the common theme here is that they always want to be one step ahead of the adversary. And of course, that's going to be a self-explanatory given, but it's how you utilize that and almost like a game of chess, right? There's going to be times when you want to create that concealment, that deception, and times where you may not because of the fact that you want to almost deceive the deception. Do you see what I'm going with that? And when you look at a battle space of today and you look at, you know, the kind of surveillance that are available and the side, you know, the type of vehicles or weapons that can be used, it opens up a very, very big question. What is next? What are we going to do for the future of warfare that is even more complex than this? I mean, could you ever imagine in World War II being a soldier and, and thinking that there's something in the sky, you know, thousands of kilometers above your, your head that could tell you who's in the trench beside you uh, or in the trench 50 meters from you that are firing an MG42 at you? Of course you wouldn't. It wasn't even a thing back then. But looking into the future and referring back to that statement as if you don't know the enemy nor yourself, you'll succumb in every battle, that technology and that kind of battle space is going to get even more complex and, to me, exciting. Enable access. Friendly forces expand outward into new movement corridors and controlled areas. They exploit windows of protection superiority, continue onward movement, and consolidate gains. The division is able to preserve, clear the obstacle, consolidate, and move on to the objective. Preserve, deny, enable access. Your protection in multi-domain operations. So there you have it, folks. As you can see, the future is promising, uh, and something as simple as a river crossing can just open up the most complex level of strategic planning or uh, complex side of actually taking on an obstacle like that you can ever conceive. Um, and for me, just little old grunt on the ground, you don't think of things like that. And sometimes it's nice to learn the bigger picture. What else is going on in the battle space? What other things such as communications, I-Star, you know, uh, reconnaissance is going on to allow you to do your job? And I think it's something that I need to learn more about and understand because if you don't understand the bigger picture, sometimes it doesn't make it as clear as to what you need to do uh, and make you more effective at the, what you need to do in your career. So, you know, if you are a part of the military force, maybe it's just something you want to research and look into. Take a look at things, you know. And as I said before, guys, take a look at the art of war. It's a really, really interesting, uh, you know, military-based uh, concept of, of warfare and it's something that obviously has been from a very long time ago but really really cool to read i hope you enjoyed today's video folks a little bit more complex and technical than uh, i would like to normally do and as i said before i'm not a subject matter expert i'm no general that's talking about you know different battle spaces and perception of battle spaces and communication ice and all that sort of stuff but it, it is really nice to talk about things like this because i think it is kind of appealing to those who you know don't know much about the way in which militaries work and the way in which something as simple as a river crossing can be if you did enjoy the video please leave me a like i'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below too if you want to support my channel go check out my patreon page it is in the description box below i'd like to thank each and every one of you who have been supporting me on there also my membership crew those who have been members of my channel i'm going to be doing some dedicated live streams coming up soon just for you there's gonna be no one else invited so if you want to come to those streams it's gonna be a good time we might even play some games uh stay tuned for that it's going to happen so if you do want to become a member click on the join uh membership of my channel and you'll be able to get some cool perks which i'm still working on uh, i promise i am going to get them done and i will uh, catch you all real soon everyone take care bye bye